about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. One of the reasons why we know that Jesus will come is because he departed with his body. So we know that he has a body to return back. He doesn't need to wait for any virgin again. He can come back. So anybody who does not believe that Jesus will return, remind them that he went with a body. He already has the body. He has satisfied the condition that allows this territory to receive him. A body has now prepared for me. Are you seeing why things like untimely death and the rest are dangerous? Because Satan knows that the only way to stop you from being an effective church is to separate your spirit from your body. There is a level of health that this body must be in for your spirit man to be able to cohabit. If it's deteriorated beyond a certain level, the spirit will have to leave. We call it death. So when you minister long life and you declare safety for people, it's not just a religious thing. In Jesus' name, arrive safely. No, you are saying may your body be kept and preserved because there is an assignment that that body needs to do. Are we, are we blessed now? God is expanding to us the way of the kingdom more perfectly like he did in Acts chapter 18 so that we understand the motivation behind the decrees we make and the spiritual activities that we communicate. You see, in this kingdom, it's not what you do that produces results. It's the understanding that supports what you do. Two people can do the same thing. For one, there will be no results because there is no understanding that supports it. The seeds that fell on good ground are they that heard the word and understood. Have I lost you? Are we still together? So the church is made of men and women. Watch this. I believe in excellence. I believe in administrative prowess. But anytime you exalt the pulpit more than the men, Anytime you exalt the aces more than the men, anytime you exalt the mic more than the men, the most important component as far as the church is concerned is the men. More than the backdrops, more than the visuals, many times we focus on the acoustics, the aesthetics, and all those things, they are wonderful. I will give you pastors after my heart, Jeremiah chapter 3 and verse 15 shepherds and they are mandated to equip god's church to give them wisdom and knowledge that is the spiritual meal no matter how wonderful you are as a man if you are not fed and nourished to grow and to have stature listen to me you cannot be called an effective member of the body ephesians chapter 4 paul mentoring the church in ephesus when we get to verse 9, he says, Ephesians chapter 4, let's read from verse 9, then we jump to 11, or verse, yeah, verse 9. Ephesians chapter 4, media, can you help us? Let's look at 8. 8, I beg your pardon. Now watch this. Wherefore he saith, when he ascended up on high, he led captivity captive. Look up, please and he gave gifts to men the gifts are not talents the gifts are men he gave men to prepare men 
so the ones you call ministers are not really the ministers the ones you call ministers are the gifts that prepare the ministers the ministers are the ones who receive from the gift that means you so the one you call reverend apostle pastor i know we say they are ministers but from god's idea they are the gifts that prepare the ministers what is ministry any and every scriptural contribution that makes for the revelation of jesus and the advancement of his kingdom is called ministry ministry has nothing to do with the pulpit it has nothing to do with a building any scriptural contribution motivated by your love for jesus and intended to reveal the christ and advance his kingdom if your pregnancy comes from your love for god and is intended to bring a child that reveals jesus that pregnancy is called ministry if your giving seed in the church is motivated by your love for jesus and intended to promote the revelation of jesus and the advancement of his kingdom that act of giving is called ministry ministry is not defined by a mic and what you say no it is not the activity that defines ministry it is the motivation and the goal so there are many people preaching but they are not in ministry why because the litmus test they failed it there number one the motivation is not from the law for god and it's not intended to reveal jesus and bring him glory no matter how religious that activity is it is not ministry isaiah was already preaching from chapter one to five but then chapter 6 the bible says in the year that king uzziah died i isaiah saw the lord when he saw the lord you would think he would say isaiah you've been going around preaching he had a lamentation who shall we send whereas the man is still preaching and doing ministry and heaven is still saying who shall we send in fact when he met the lord and said i am a man of unclean lips god would have said no 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 you are too harsh on yourself he said kneel down they carried a coal of fire to touch him meaning it was true Hear me never downplay men because it is with men that jesus is lifted and jesus is glorified every evil in the world today came through men every deliverance in the world today came through men including the man jesus every trouble in society today the armed robbers are not spirits the terrorists are not spirits they are motivated by spirits but spirits will not disturb them if they did not carry bodies anything that carries a body the devil is interested in it because he knows that that is a potential worshiper that is a potential lifter of the name of jesus so don't say who did i trouble that trouble is coming to me let me tell you where the trouble is that you came with a body is the trouble We have an idea that if I don't trouble anybody in the village, nothing will trouble me. It's a joke. Provided you carry a body, Satan will not wait till you repent before he attacks you. He knows what bodies can do. That's why the church is called the body of Christ. What does that mean? The body that he uses. It's only the head. We are the body. So when the Christ wants to lift someone from a wheelchair and the hand is not working well, if you want to lift somebody from a wheelchair and your hand is not working well even though you have the power are you seeing why many people are not healed because the hands those who are playing the role of the hands have not been playing it well what of the eyes the eyes some of you have seen patients who have maybe acute states of glaucoma and sometimes they can see some they may not even see this and they'll come and hit it so if the body of Christ just moves like that into error, where are the eyes? The eyes are misleading the body somewhere. Find out what role you have to play in the body and make sure you play it well. There are times that you can have just a little boil, maybe around your ears or, the, or maybe Whitlow. How many of you have had this thing called Whitlow? Your whole body will paralyze because of a tiny finger. This is what is happening in the body of Christ. Because of one person's carelessness, one person's mistake, everybody suffers. Can I tell you this? I'm not preaching, this is not a pastor's conference, but I, let me just steal out a minute or two and tell you this. Individualism will destroy the body. 
we are a corporate body if i do well and you fail your failure will still affect me we have to know that we are interconnected no matter how i love or hate you that's my own business but as far as moving together is a train no matter how the eyes quarrels with the hand for as long as the hand wants to move forward the eyes must lead it and for as long as the eyes wants to see well the balm that you put in the eyes will be held by the hand are we together do not say it does not concern me that was a mistake of esther when her man was plotting to annihilate the jews he did not know that it will only start outside the palace but it will eventually come here believers hear me every time you hear that the church is suffering anywhere whether it's in anambra here or meiduguri or anywhere across the world don't say it's not my business you are making the mistake of esther mordecai warned her and said do not think the king is yet to know you are a jew so by the time he's done with us they will come into the palace and check if there is any jew there and they will find you if vashti left you can leave too and esther said let me mark, let me use the opportunity that i have now to be an effective member are we together so you hear that a church is crying a, a program like this is happening and you are an empowered person you are a multi-millionaire you are a billionaire they don't worry it's not my church i don't care by the time somebody who should repent in that church who is close to your son who can destroy your son and lead him to cultism it was that meeting that would have led that person to get born again now you did not sponsor that meeting he will continue with your own son it may not affect you but eventually it is that son that will give you heart attack to die and you will leave the money to fools who will destroy it anything you do for the church eventually blesses you you don't have to ask once jesus is going to be lifted and jesus is going to be glorified you can say you know what there is a bag of water i don't know all i know is that jesus is lifted in this program let this bag of we have to shelve all this 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 childish and funny things that happen across the body of christ it is me my reputation joshua selman no if the whole world is my church the world will fail because i am only a dimension of god it means i will rob the body of christ from seeing other aspects of god i must be unashamed to know and admit that i can't be the whole church when jesus divided himself he called himself the bread of life he divided himself among 12 apostles none of them carried the whole bread all of them carried little pieces for you to have the whole bread back they must come together and form that bread everybody only carried a piece of the bread if the only thing you teach is prosperity the church will suffer if the only thing you teach is holiness the church will suffer if the only thing you teach is salvation the church will be saved but they will not grow if the only thing you teach is transformation those who are saved will be built but you will not have in gathering again can i encourage you i'm glad that i'm speaking the church in onisha must make up their minds that in the name of jesus no more fighting look i know we don't agree i i have I, I have a problem with the way you do your thing but that is not enough reason to hate you i should be able to see you and say good afternoon sir how is everything oh you are going for midweek service may the lord bless you and not that he closes the door and say all these people wait no 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 it is true that we are not equal oh don't confuse that one we are equal in christ but our sacrifices and election of grace has separated us into spiritual cadres. we must admit that however i must be able to hug a man of god with joy to hug a brother and sister and say wow okay you believe in this i don't believe in this you believe in deliverance i don't believe in deliverance. no problem no problem it's all right you can hold that perspective but it's too small a reason to cause us to fight hear me the church in onisha there is a dimension of the power and the grace of god will soon be praying that cannot be seen by an individual this you already know you are in error when you think you are the only one god is using that already is an attack let me tell you in advance i'm saying this especially to the younger ministers who are rising in as much as you are doing well we have to be careful 
because most of you you listen to us and you listen to people around and you ship in little little fragments of error and just grant it there is no single individual who has the power to carry all of god while i'm standing here preaching only god will open your eyes to see the intercessors around the world whose prayer lives are by far greater than my own who are now helping me to stand how could i take all the credit to myself no matter how anointed i am here is a man that god has raised to put this meeting to gather us it doesn't matter whether you like me or not but now i have come and you have received me it's not just because i'm anointed here is the person who created the platform what of the other bishops who gave him a right hand of fellowship both the ones who preserve the weapons and the one who goes for war they all deserve honor can i tell you this until we learn to mutually honor and respect one another there will never be unity in the body now watch this imagine that i come up here after celebrating me and saying many nice things i come up here and i rubbish every pastor rubbish your bishop rubbish our, our dear man of god from germany and i make all of you look as if you are not serious you are not serving god you don't know anything let me bring you revelation that is error i may be sincere but it's error you may love me but you'll be disappointed in me and your heart will not be open to receive again it is at the standpoint i have come not to outshine i have not come to intimidate i have come to lift up your hands together like a family to lift up jesus are you learning now don't be a notable gospel artist that god is blessing in the city and then you see someone like a come this my dear sister you see this lady who is here and she's singing while she's singing you're like oh don't mind all these people they can't sing anything where is that my man you see when you start thinking like that it looks like just because you prayed in tongues afterwards does not mean you know what you are saying it's an attack everybody created by god has a role to play as far as the revelation of jesus is concerned we who god has granted the the rare privilege the rare privilege i repeat the rare privilege is a privilege if god were to call us based on our prayer lives based on our word lives based on our holiness levels some of us will not even be close to this place because my goodness my god there are people who love god there are people who give they may not be educated they may not they may they may have never gone to any country but they love the lord with all his heart be careful lest on the day that jesus comes will be very disappointed you will be surprised to see those who will be in front can i speak to the younger ministers my dear people listen to me i love you and i believe what god is doing but all this little little pride that is already manifesting in your prayer group fighting one prayer group fighting this kill it now after this service go and hug the other brother and say do you know what um we may not agree with this and that but it's not the issue of who is a champion who is this one who is that one the, the spirit of competition came from the deprivation that africa brought anytime you grow up in a territory of deprivation the the instinct to outshine is a weakness in men you must conquer it by the prevailing power of the holy spirit Please sit down, please sit down, please sit down. Are we together? I have the rare, listen, let me tell you, and I don't mean to brag, forgive me if I do, but I know what it means to be honored. I have stood before kings. I have stood before royalties. I have stood before nobles. I know what it means to be honored. God has blessed me in a way that it would take me many lifetimes to tell him thank you. But I made a vow and a covenant with myself that I will never miss a generation that looks up to me. I will teach them that no matter how high you rise, you only rise because someone was holding the ladder as you climb. Be wise enough to look down and say both me who is up there and everyone who helped to hold that ladder. The person who held, who held the ladder is even more important than you. Because if the person leaves that ladder from that height, he will go down. So for those of you 
who disrespect every other man of God and respect Joshua Selman alone, you are in error. Straight to the point, let me just give you a godly counsel now. The moment you find yourself selecting people to honor, and you see our fathers here who, are, who labor in word and doctrine, some of you have never given them, and please permit my bias, some of them are from your soil. You have never given them 10 naira. Right now in your pocket, there are all kinds of envelopes. You are waiting to see me and give me. As good as that is, if you cannot honor the people who serve day and night, I'm only here for two days and I'm going back. But the people that pray for you, when you are in trouble, they are the people who stand for you. You see, as men of God, we have to be wise. This is already part minister's conference, part um, general conference. It's impossible to fight and have quarrels when you have this disposition. Now, there must be that element of love. If I come into a place like this, when I came, they graciously took me to your bishop and we had a very pleasant time. We spoke, the ones who came yesterday and um, a bishop here and all of the men of God. See, members will love you even if you shout and quarrel them. When they discern that you really value them sincerely. I hope you are learning what I'm teaching. I know our time is a bit stretched, but just sit down. You call this, you want a revival. In the night, we are going to speak about revival. And the move of God, the coming move of God. I'm going to be teaching you while we do the miracle service. But for now, listen to me. My brothers and my sisters, it is important. East of the Niger, hear me. There is a level of unity that you have attained. That's why the devil has not been able to penetrate you thus far. If you lose that unity, you have lost more than money. It's better to lose a billion dollars and preserve that unity. Stop fighting. Stop looking down on one another. Stop enjoying the pain of one another. When you hear that a man of God, listen to me. When you hear that a man of God is sick, don't celebrate it and say, oh, he doesn't know anything about faith. He was laughing at deliverance. No, no, no. Don't let him lose this body. Remember, any minus to this body is minus for an army. You hear that there is a rent problem and that man is about to come to shame and reproach. Somebody should quickly, you can rebuke him later. But for now, for the sake of the work, I hope you still love me. Sorry that this is hard. This is an apostolic and a prophetic conference. You invited me for a conference. Look at this. My brothers and my sisters, I give you counsel from the Lord. The reason why certain revivals cannot come because it takes a corporate anointing to bring it. No matter how you excel as an individual, you will not be able to capture certain dimensions of God. So let's be careful so that the devil does not deceive us into believing we are the only ones who are doing well. What this man is doing is a major work. But every one priest here, every one man of God, regardless of the denomination, and fathers of faith, please, with all due respect, don't despise the young ones coming. They may have their tantrums. They may make their mistakes. They may be arrogant. Correct them in love, but don't despise them. They represent the Samuel who will help Eli. When you despise them and someone else mentors them, they will be loyal to the one who raised them, not you. This is also true for politicians. If you are here, you are a politician, please listen. No matter how many years you spend, you are in office for only eight years, or I don't know how many years they do it now, you, how many eight years or whatever it is, the purpose of access is to help you raise men. Shame on anybody who does not raise anybody, whether in ministry, whether in whatever it is. You have wasted the access God gave you. This is one of the reasons why I love your region. As a man of God, don't rise alone. Don't shine alone. Who are you raising? Who are you teaching what God taught you? The death of a few people should not paralyze what God is doing because they should have transferred something. The church refers to men and women. So on Sunday, every time you stand, do not just think the members that come to sit down are just sheep. 
they are the ministers you are the gift and hear me there are members who also don't listen a ship does not have a system of defense a ship does not have horns it depends on the guidance of the shepherd you see that there's a difference between a sheep and a goat a goat has horns it can fight a sheep does not have any instrument to fight on its own it depends on the protection and the covering that comes from the shepherd so the sheep's safety is how close it is to the shepherd if it goes far the wolf will come and devour it automatically when satan wants to destroy you the first law of destruction is isolation through pride he takes you out of the bigger fold and keeps you alone and makes you believe you are doing well then he allows your spiritual fire to go down then he will attack you one day that it will take intercession and the mercy of god for you to recover please don't miss tonight i'm going to be sharing with you something about the coming revival and the move of god so the church is a strategy the church refers to men and women let me give us the last one and then we'll pray number three the church finally is an institution the church is an institution hebrews chapter 10 please from verse 24 and 25 the church now refers to an institution an institution that preserves the only listen to me the only potent or the most potent institution that preserves morals preserves godliness preserves love are we together now is this institution called the church law courts can help to manage criminals manage litigations prison cells and correctional centers can help to manage people who have become a nuisance to society or defaulters of the law but the church is the only institution that sustains the power and the ability to raise men from darkness to light and from light to become objects and influences around the state the church is one of the mind control systems that control the health of a territory i can pick anybody at random from onicha and if i pick 10 believers or 10 citizens and examine them based on their moral values based on their sense of leadership responsibility and so on their lives are a report card they tell me how well this institution called the church is serving within that territory are we together and let us consider one another to provoke unto love and unto good works 25 it says not forsaking the assembling of ourselves as the manner of some is but exhorting one another and also much the more as you see the day approaching every sunday weekday and every other day millions of people within your region the east of the niger within this nation africa and the world gather under this name of jesus christ under the mentorship of several leaders with different degrees of training can i tell you this men and women of god and the church as an institution is the principal shaper of the convictions and the morals of people within a society when you see high crime rate high irresponsibility rate the church must receive a major portion of that blame we must come up with programs more than sermons that help to fix people programs that are referenced from scripture but are applicable to all and sundry it does not have to be for christians alone are we blessed so the church as an institution must have its expression in schools that control the mind of the young ones when students begin to fail exams when moral decadence begin to grow in the school when students are not respectful younger people disrespecting the elders when the when the values that preserve society are lost is because something about that institution called the church is failing let's mark our work now based on the reference of scripture can you say the young people you are training 
are becoming responsible young gentlemen can you say the ladies you are training are becoming virtuous ladies who love Jesus and love nation the church is a strategy against darkness and spiritual powers the church refers to men who reveal Jesus and promote his agenda the church is also an institution that raises men preserves morals preserves values no society can truly grow effectively without the value systems that the church promotes even if it's a non-christian territory i can tell you behind their value system will be a lot of components that are consistent with scripture they may not admit the god of the bible but there is the gospel as the message that saves and then there is the gospel as a value system that transforms society both are found in the church the message that saves affects individuals the value system that transforms affects territories you can be saved and yet your territory is not safe because you have embraced the message but you rejected the value system what then is my call this afternoon my call is that the church must return to her position in power onisha you are a city a region and by extension the entire anambra state and then the east of the niger it's an honor to stand in partnership to speak and to challenge us at such a time as this the world is waiting to see if the church will fail but i i reminded you and i'm still reminding you again that the church cannot fail we can fail as individuals but the church will remain because the jealousy of god is behind it if there is any punchline to all that i've said among the many things i've said i think one of the clearest points that you should take back is the unity of the faith the unity of the faith the unity of the faith i hope that by evening we'll have the time to pray and if God allows, we'll just select a few leaders to come and stand up here in unity as we speak over Anambra State. Speak over. Please don't miss tonight. It's going to be a highly prophetic time as we pray. The days of superstar Christianity over. There are four things. That must be found in that institution let me end it this way any church that does not have these four things is not a building it's not an institution it's something else number one in every church as an institution there must be listen carefully there must be the preaching of the gospel of salvation to the end that sinners save number one any christian institution that does not allow for the preaching of the gospel to the end that sinners be saved is not the church we may differ like i said in denominations there are all kinds of denominations across across the globe but for any place to be called a church like the building an institution no matter how beautiful the edifice is there must be number one the preaching of the gospel of salvation to the end that sinners be saved jesus must be the epicenter of that gospel number one number two for any church to be called a true church the second thing that must happen is that there must be a sound exegesis of doctrine doctrine is the course curriculum that matures believers the name given to the course curriculum that matures believers is called doctrine doctrines are not opinions doctrines are established truths hebrews chapter 6 from verse 1 and 2 it gives us six foundational doctrines of the faith the course content that matures believers remember yesterday our teaching yesterday night that the greatest need of a non-believer is what salvation the greatest need of a believer is what transformation it is doctrine that matures believers believers are not matured by opinions and stories doctrine the bible basically contains three things 
Number one, the Bible contains promises. Number two, the Bible contains principles. Number three, the Bible contains prophecies. So every time we expose ourselves to scripture, we're interacting with the promises of God, the principles of the kingdom, and prophecy. Scattered in every Bible story is the revelation of Jesus and the precepts of the kingdom. They are called the mysteries of the kingdom. Matthew 13 and verse 11. It has been given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. Doctrine. We must restore doctrine. Doctrine gives a unified system of growth. Are we together? There is a universal way or an acceptable way to be saved. If you do not go through it, there is the doctrine of salvation. You cannot, if you say you are saved, I will ask you what you did. Romans chapter 10 from verse 8 down to 12 gives us God's blueprint on how people are saved. That with the heart man believes unto righteousness, then with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. If you do not believe with your heart and you do not confess with your mouth, you are not saved. It's as simple as that. Are we together? Here is where my bias comes in. What we have come to know in the body of Christ as the Apostles' Creed. Now, all those who are not of the Anglican faith here, please do not mind. I, I don't in any way downplay what you believe and what you stand for. But I'm just saying that this, in my mind, is a very, very commendable representation. It's a creed that, that just sets in pace the foundation of the Christian faith. It's an announcing of what you believe. Are we blessed? So number one, the preaching of the gospel. Number two, the teaching of the word. Doctrine being the cost content on what we teach believers. Number three, every true church, listen carefully, every true church must give allowance for the love and the power of the Holy Spirit to find expression, providing supernatural solutions to the problems of men. The church is also a solution center. There must be a space given to the Holy Ghost. And I'm not just talking of falling down and shouting. No, I'm talking about the fact that the Holy Ghost must have allowance to provide supernatural solutions to men. In healings, miracles, transformation, restoration, breakthroughs. Do not say results don't matter. They do matter. They do matter. People come from families that are plagued with all kinds of things. Poverty, rejection, degradation. While the, the word of God comes, doctrine works on the belief systems of people. The Holy Ghost must come. He must be there as the confirmer of everything that is taught. So I come from a family where, for instance, no one has seen the light of day. No one has risen to a position of influence. But because I come to church, the Holy Ghost can now find me there and break that yoke of darkness and give me room to open doors on account of my result, my family members can now come. Come see a man, she said, that has told me everything. One madman who received healing and deliverance brought 10 cities to Jesus. One woman as a prostitute who had an encounter with Jesus Christ went and brought so many people. Results matter. They are real instruments of publicity. They bring many to Jesus. And then finally, every true church must have space for fellowship and the demonstration of the love of Jesus, both to members and society. Please listen very carefully. Every true church must have a space that demonstrates and reveals the love of Jesus very practically, both to members and then to society. This is where things like charity, this is where things like reaching out to society, Helping the poor. Society does not have to believe in Jesus to benefit from us. Our greatest goal is that they come to the saving knowledge of Jesus. But society have to feel that the life of God is within a territory. Hear me? No matter what denomination, no matter what Christian sect, if these four things are not captured there, it is not the church. The preaching of the gospel of salvation to the end that sinners be saved, 
Jesus Christ being the epicenter of that gospel. Number one, test. Number two, a sound exegesis of doctrine to the end that believers be transformed. How are they transformed? By changing their belief systems. Sustaining superior belief systems that improve their work with God and improve their being relevant as far as nation building is concerned. Number three, there must be an allowance for the demonstration of the power of the Holy Spirit providing supernatural solutions for people and then number four the love of jesus must be revealed in a practical and a definite way first to those who are of the household of faith like the bible demands but then it extends to the society everywhere if every one of you is involved in these four things you qualify to be called the church if any church building any denomination is involved in these four things you qualify to be called the church anything outside of it is just religion and a sheer waste of god's time have you been blessed this afternoon please rise up on your feet thank you for your patience it takes time to learn the ways of god in the latter times many will not endure sound doctrine this is the church now you learn that the church is a strategy men who promote kingdom come and an institution that becomes a preserver of morals and so on and so forth i'd like you to pray one prayer for this afternoon father the role that i have to play as far as the church in onisha now you understand what i mean by the church in onisha the church in onisha means the universal body of christ within this region lift your voice and pray the role that I have to play, whether as a businessman, as a pastor, as a politician, as a career person, as a student, I obtain grace from heaven. Lift your voice and please pray. Lift your voice and pray. Lift your voice and pray. Lift your voice and pray. In the name of Jesus, I obtain grace by the power of the Holy Spirit. I obtain grace. hallelujah now please just lend me a minute more before i drop the mic if if um reverend canon allows i had requested that for the miracle service tonight we're going to be i'll just share a bit on the coming move of god and revivals just hello scriptures exhort us from the book of proverbs it says my son attend to my sins incline thy ears to my words let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well. That you will keep these words in the midst of your heart. That no matter the circumstance, your eyes are going to be fixed on these words. And as you have been blessed, we will tell you to share this message. Be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed. And then subscribe to this channel for us. Because we have loads of videos. We have loads of content that is going to make you blessed. That is going to set you on course. That is going to set you ablaze. And don't forget to like for us. Thank you.